journalist Mehmet Baran Sug, who was indicted for publishing classified documents from a 2004 National Security Council MGK, meeting during which council members had discussed an action plan targeting the faith-based Gulen movement, is facing a prison term of 52 years, with the first hearing of his trial taking place at an Istanbul court on Wednesday. The MGK document dated August 25, 2004 persuades the Justice and Development Party, AK Party, government to implement a series of measures to curb the activities of the Gulen movement, also known as the Hizmet movement. It advises the government to adopt legal measures that would impose harsh penalties on Gulen-affiliated institutions. Immediately after Berenice's report was published in the Tariff Daily on November 28, 2013, the Prime Ministry, the National Intelligence Organization, MIT, and the MGK filed a joint criminal complaint against the Daily and Baron Sook for revealing confidential state documents. The complaint immediately turned into an investigation into the journalist, with Baron Sook facing charges of acquiring confidential documents crucial to state security, revealing information that is forbidden from being publicized and political and military espionage. The first hearing of the trial was held at the Anatolia 10th High Criminal Court on Wednesday. Baron Sug, who is currently under arrest in Salivari Prison as a result of another investigation, did not attend the hearing. Baron Sug was arrested by the Stanbul 5th Penal Court in March over documents he had submitted to prosecutors regarding the sledgehammer, Balias, coup plot against the government in 2010. Since November 2013, Tariff has published several confidential documents suggesting that the ruling AK Party and MT have been profiling individuals linked to various religious and faith-based groups, mainly the Gulen movement, inspired by Turkish Islamic scholar Fethullah Gulen. The party confirmed the authenticity of the documents but argued that no action was taken to implement the policy prescriptions indicated therein. In the indictment, the prosecutor's office said although the entire contents of the August 25, 2004 MGK meeting was required to be kept confidential, Baron so covered it on the front page of the newspaper, thus openly violating laws that provide a shield of secrecy for MGK meetings and documents. In addition to Baron Su, Tariff's then-managing editor Murat Sevki Koban is also implicated for his role in allowing Baron Su's story to be published. Koban is also facing a prison term of 52 years. Delivering his defense statement, Koban said the report should be interpreted within the scope of press freedom. Stating that the exposure of a crime does not constitute a crime, Koban sought his acquittal. In the meantime, Baron Su testified to a prosecutor at the Stanbul courthouse in Alian on Thursday based on a complaint by Isat Burakuz and Deer, the user of pro-government Twitter troll account Isat C., known for posting insulting and inflammatory messages targeting people who do not support the AK party. Uzundara's complaint was based on a Twitter post by Baron Su on him on the grounds that Baron Su had violated his privacy. In one of his earlier tweets, Baron Su revealed Isat C's real identity as Uzundur, which was later confirmed by a court, and exposed his link to the AK party. Meanwhile, Baron Su's lawyer and family members were disappointed and upset that the journalist was taken to Alian on Thursday, the only day that they are allowed to have an open visit. Baron Su's lawyer Sirkin Sokol said the journalist had been taken to the courthouse while his family was waiting for an open visit with him in Salivri. As he was being taken to courthouse, Baron Su spoke to reporters waiting in the corridors of the courthouse, stating he has been kept in isolation for 98 days and that he is preparing his defense under difficult circumstances in prison. The prosecution of journalists for their work or because of their criticisms of the government or President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has become almost a daily occurrence in Turkey, with dozens of them facing charges of insulting a state official or conducting terrorist propaganda. Most recently, Come here yet editor-in-chief Ken Dundar is facing an aggravated life sentence as a result of a criminal complaint filed by Erdogan on Tuesday for the publication of images that prove that arms were transferred to Syria by MT. The images contradict the government's earlier claim that the trucks were only carrying humanitarian aid to Turkmens in the war-torn country. Last week, journalist Erkam Tufan Itaf, who works for Bugun TV, 
testified to Stanbul Deputy Chief Public Prosecutor Fusilai Adadu as a suspect at the Stanbul Courthouse. ITOF did not give any information about the content of the investigation because it was confidential. On the same day, another journalist, Itkin Gazisi, was also in court at the first hearing of a trial launched against him over charges of insulting President Erdogan, Prime Minister Ahmet Davutoglu, Deputy Prime Minister Bülent Arn and former Justice Minister Bekir Bazda on social media. In addition, journalists Mergun Kaba, Kori Alkan and Banu Guvan as well as TV host Palin Batu were summoned by the Stanbul Chief Public Prosecutor's Office last week to testify as part of an investigation into their social media posts regarding the killing of a public prosecutor during a hostage crisis at the Stanbul Courthouse on March 31st. The journalists are accused of conducting propaganda for a terrorist organization in their tweets on the day the prosecutor was killed. Journalists facing legal action in Turkey today are just not limited to these figures, with dozens more who are either in prison or prosecuted. Semenyalu Broadcasting Group General Manager Hidayat Karaka was taken into custody on December 14, 2014 as part of a government-backed police operation. Karaka was later arrested and remains in prison on suspicion of being a member of an armed organization. The charges against him are based on a fictional TV series that was broadcast a few years ago. Sedef Kabaz, a TV presenter, is facing a prison sentence of up to five years for posting a tweet about a corruption probe involving high-profile individuals.